Have you lost your job? Have you lost a loved one? Are you exhausted caring for your parents, for your kids? Well, you can find immediate relief when you read Sheila Mack's new number one bestseller, Bootstraps and Bra Straps. It contains the boots formula to move from rock bottom back into action in any situation, especially right now. If life has knocked you down, pick yourself up with bootstraps and bra straps. Get your copy at www.sheilamack.com today. Are you ready for a reboot? Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. History reminds us those hit hardest often become the change makers. This year, we've all hit crazy economic, social, and emotional rock bottoms. We all get knocked down. Something hits globally, locally, personally. It affects our health, finances, our relationships. We have to recreate a business or career. Each show, Sheila and her special guest will be sharing their reboot stories, guiding you with real solutions to upgrade and up-level emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Here on NBC's KCAA Radio, Mondays at 1 and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Pacific Time. If you're ready to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and bra straps, enjoy a listen. Here's Sheila. Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. Here we have real people sharing real stories and actionable steps to help you reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your life on your terms. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and today we have Sonny, and he is a man of great achievements, living proof that we are not defined by the shadows of our past. So he's got a story to share today. All right, Sonny Van Cleveland, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. All right. And this show is based on my new best-selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. And this year we have had just about every situation. So I like to start each show off by asking the special guest if they have a story about a time that they hit a rock bottom or tough situation and how they got back on track. Well, I've had several <laughs> rock bottoms. Uh, but the one thing that I've come to discover about rock bottom, man, is it's a great place to start building. Mm -hmm. You know, once you get there, there's you, you, there's no fear anymore. You know, you lose any sense of worry because there's nowhere else to go. So you just start building up. But yeah, I mean, oh, there's there's several rock bottoms, Sheila. Uh, I guess the hardest one is going to be uh, I did I served 18 years in the penitentiary. Uh, I, went in, I went to prison when I was 16 years old. Um, mm -hmm. And in that time, I, it was over two sentences. It wasn't all at once. I did five and a half years when I was 16. I got released when I was 21 um, with no supervision, no friends, no family. I come from a pretty bad, rough background. Um, and so I was pretty bad. And then I went back to prison almost two years later when I was 23. And uh, I stayed there for 12 just 12 years and uh, got out 2016. Uh, but it was in that time around 2008 that, you know, everything really kind of fell apart for me in my life. My brother was having an affair with my kid's mother. Um, you know, I had no friends. I was, you know, at that point still staring down eight more years to go in prison. And I just, I hit rock bottom, got into a really violent altercation. I uh, was given a five year sentence in the hole. Uh, and during that time in the hole, I met a Muslim man named Mallory Bay who pretty much changed my life. And he, he helped me to see things from different because in that time, there's nobody. There's he and there's I. And we're at the end of a cell block and it's just you and I. He's across the hallway and that's it. So, you know, the first few days that we were there, he was calling over, talking to him. I didn't want to talk to him. I was just mad, cussing him out. Uh, but he would try for. God, better part of two weeks he tried. And then finally, you know, loneliness starts to kick in. And, you know, you're sitting in the same room for two weeks. You haven't gone anywhere. You haven't seen anybody except the CO that comes by. You know, you start to you know, get into your own mind and, and you start to break down, which is what it's designed to do, I, I, I suppose, at the end of the day. But, uh, you know, this man started to talk to me and, and I, it could have gone one of two ways. I could have gone completely over the edge 
or I do what I did do, and that was find myself, find my passion, become self-aware, and uh, start picking myself up from that rock bottom. Started reading, investing in myself, learning how to care about myself and uh, other people, and life started to change. Wow, that's incredible. That That's a heck of a story. And 16, you must have been in an interesting state. They tried you so young. That yeah, was Michigan, it's a prison okay. state. Yeah. You know, that's what they love to do. They love to throw everybody in prison in Michigan for the oh. littlest things. That's how they make their money. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's just crazy. Yeah, yeah. it's it's <laughs> nuts, to say the least. I mean, I was really fortunate. I was homeless from 10 to 13 and then in foster care, emancipated at 15. But before I emancipated, they sent me to a place to wait to emancipate because they didn't like this young kid who wanted to go out on her own. They thought, right. who the hell do you think you are? And so they put me, they said, you can go to the hall or you can go to camp. And I said, well, I've already been to the hall so many times. I'll go to the camp. I thought camp was like camp. <laughs> right, right. They use that word camp. <laughs> <laughs> like a prison camp for these young, young kids that had done some really serious things. And I was like, you know, and they're like, what's your rap sheet? And I'm like, I'm emancipating. I don't have, you know, and, and I was like, I should make something up. But it was interesting. And the lady kept me there. The, the head counselor didn't like me. She kept me there six months when I was only supposed to be there a few weeks. Well, they did paperwork. Oh, and that's their biggest excuse. They love that. I, I had to AWOL to get out. And my probation officer told me, hey, I actually thought you were out already. I've got like, I don't know, a thousand or two thousand cases. And I just figured you were fine because wow. you're not to worry about. <laughs> and, and the lady got fired and I finally got out. And I think it's, and I thought about the experience really blessed me in the sense that I got to know these kids and what they were really about, who they were um, on yeah. a level, let's just say, instead of, you know, what we have in our minds, oh, if somebody did something wrong, they're bad what really happened, what road they went down, their stories, their incredible stories and their struggles. And it really blessed me and helped me to have far more compassion. And it everything showed up in perfect time. Like I needed that space. And I don't know, maybe you were protected from some terrible thing. I'll, you know, who knows? But right. there's some kind of reason, I at least I chose to believe that, that really helped me and it you know helped me the rest of my life to be able to work with kids i ended up working with kids that were emancipating and at-risk youth i had over 200 of them that went through a training program through my gift stores and they learned a lot about how to run a gift store nobody would hire these kids All right well yeah that's a big I problem I hire you <laughs> yeah because i know who's going to work out and who's not and just with the interview and they are still family years later and they that's have awesome. businesses now. So well, you know, most of those kids, that's just what they're looking for. They just they need somebody to to listen to them. You know, that I think yeah, I, I never dealt with the juvenile system. So I, I mean, I don't know. I, I was in a lot of trouble, but I was never taken away in the juvenile. I caught my first felony when I was seven. Yeah. And uh but I was never taken away. And then finally the judge got sick of it at 16 and said, All right, I'm trying you as an adult. And then the adult court got a hold of me. They're like, we're not even playing with you. And yeah. just sent me to prison. But in the time, because I, I now I'm a serious advocate for youth, uh, yeah. for troubled youth. I like, I, you know, I want to go to these prisons and talk to these kids because I've been there. I know what you're going through. And most of the time, it's just they just want to be heard. They just want to listen. But you take these college educated people and you put them in this prison and you're and you expect these kids, even the adult convicts, to identify with with this person who you've never even stolen a piece of gum or or punched somebody in the face how are you going to relate to me we, we're we're not the same yeah. and then there and and because of the cultural mindset that kids grow up in when we're not the same i'm just my mind is closed off to listening to you so mm -hmm. anything that you're telling me i'm not it's not it's 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 just here and bouncing off i'm not listening at all i'm not paying any attention even if i'm sitting here like this right you know what i mean because they learn in that system when you learn when you grow up like that they learn manipulation on its finest level so when somebody comes in i know i have to get through this class in order to get a, a bit of freedom or get out so i'm just going to sit here intent 
like I know what you're saying. And then and yeah. it's going in one ear, not the other. Right. Whereas if you take somebody who's been there, mm -hmm. they go in there, we can relate because I know what you're going through. I know the smell that's inside your coffee cup. I know, you know, the feeling of state issue clothing and you can't wear new clothing anymore because it just, it doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, it's those things that, that we relate to that we know, you know what I mean? Making a fish line out of the, the, the string that's inside your mattress so that you can shoot something over to somebody else. <laughs> that's something you, you don't learn that in college. They can't tell you about that, you know? And so when we're, we relate to that level, now you can look at what I do with my life and understand that it's not over. You might have made a mistake. You might have been a victim, but you still have value. You still have purpose in this earth, and it's not over. You can do whatever you want with your life. Yeah. And it, it's it's a common mindset that they put on juveniles and, and other adult convicts that you're not going to be able to succeed outside of this unless you do this, this, and this, and this. You're not going to make it at all. And it's just not true. It's just not true. Yes, it really is. Um, in fact, one of my closest friends, he passed away now. He was more like my stepdad, but not really. Um, my best friend and her, her mom and, and the husband. And he actually went to prison at 16 in Delaware. He stole his best friend's car. They went on a joy ride and he was driving it because I guess the parents got divorced. He wrote a whole book about this. And yeah. while he was in prison in Delaware, they tried him as an adult and he, he was really smart, but nobody realized, you know what I mean? And so oh. he, he's tests and he passed all these math tests. And so people were interested in him and the DuPont family actually gave him full scholarships and he went into MIT and graduated in three years. And then he went on to Cal State, graduated in three years and then became a professor. And so prison wow. really did, it did a good thing for him. It was it was stupid that the parents pressed charged charges on a kid. He had no rap sheet. He had nothing, and and he ended up going to prison. But then they gave him a full pardon, and with the Dupont family's help and all that. So he got really blessed, and that's the rare story. But the more people huh. that are connected and concerned, it was because somebody actually saw what he was doing, that he was capable of math. I mean, I still don't know what he talks about with the calculus um, and, and everything. But when people see what, what he was capable of or who he really was, and each person um, that's, that's serving time in these prisons, they, they are capable of so much more. It may be a, a difficult situation. You started, you said when you were seven, you had situations. And so something wasn't happening at home, maybe I'm guessing. Oh no, yeah, I was, I was horribly being molested from the time I was five until I was ten years old, okay. um, by four different men, yeah. uh, you know, boyfriends that were in and out of my mother's life, uh, you know, some of her family friends and my uncle. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was, you know, it was a very. On the surface, things looked okay. Yes, you yeah. know what I mean, because that's how it always is. You know, like my mother was a, a hardworking woman. You know, she would work, go, go to work, come work all day, come home, cook, clean. You know, everything is, is nice in the house. You know, we always had what we needed, not necessarily yeah. what we wanted, but we always had what we needed. And she always cooked. Uh, but behind that curtain, you know, she was was really letting go in her life with the drugs and, and the choices that she was making that we we didn't see as a child. But looking back now, you're like, that's what it means when you're asking if it's snowing and it's July. Yeah. And you're on the phone and saying, hey, is it snowing over in Palamo? You know, now you start to pick up on these things like, okay, that was a Coke deal. I get it. And you start seeing all these things that, that were happening and analyzing it. Obviously, hindsight's twenty twenty, but, um, you know, it's just it, you feel irrelevant. Uh, when when you're being victimized like that, and there's really nobody to talk to, so right. w the what had happened to me was it seemed to me uh, this pattern that all these men that come into my life they just want to molest me, they want to hurt me. Uh, so when I first got into trouble, uh, mm -hmm. in my first stint with the police, you know, here's these grown men that that are disciplining me and they're showing me this attention and they don't want to hurt me, and so I fell in love with that attention. And the only way to get that attention was to break the law and get the cops to come back out. So I kept breaking the law.
because yeah. it would get the police involved. The cops would come. They'd grab me up. They'd sit me down and talk to me. Oh, young man, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, you're getting that discipline from a male figure. And, and then the lawyers are doing it as well. And it's just it was an atmosphere that all these men cared about me and didn't want to hurt me. Yeah. So I wanted to be in that atmosphere, right. uh, which ended up ultimately by the time I was 15 years old, I had 10 felonies. <laughs> you know, and, and and then I go to big prison and turned into a monster because I don't have any friends. I don't have any family. I'm too shut off from the world to embrace any serious type of relationship or respect of friendship. So I don't have anybody in my life. Nobody's going to stand in your corner when you've been a piece of shit your whole life. And people say, well, you couldn't have been a piece of shit. You were 15. That's not true. It's just not true. I mean, you know, as someone who was emancipated when you were 15, we grew up young. Yeah. You know, and you just sometimes you you mature out of necessity and you have to become older. I was drinking and partying with 20 year olds when I was 14. My girlfriends were 16, 17 when I was 14. When I was 12, yeah. I had a 16 year old girlfriend because I lied to her and told her I was 16. She believed it. I've always been a big kid. You know, I had a mustache when I was really young. So everybody thought I was a grown ass adult. Mm -hmm. And so you start to adopt that mentality. And now, you know, I think that I'm an adult, but I'm not mentally uh, uh, experienced or grown enough to deal with the situations that are in my life. So I don't know how to deal with it and lash out, which ultimately just led me into prison. Yeah. You know? But then you come to that self-discovery moment where, where you it, things start to snap and, and you, you know, you pick yourself up. That's it. And that's, you always have a choice, no matter what happens, no matter what your sentence or situation is, there's a choice on who you're going to be in every moment. And I mean, I remember going to the first, see, I was homeless 10 to 13 and a half in Hollywood. So, I mean, I slept at the Troubadour on the, on the wooden benches <laughs> because I mean, I was dating a guy there so i got to stay there and and that's a safe place to sleep and then from friend's house to the friend's house and of course they all partied because that's who you could stay at the at the week during the weekday during school night you could have to go to those kind of houses right. and just the way it was and it was just it was really interesting nobody even knew i still went to school right and nobody so expelled i got expelled because i was such a leader I, I coordinated this whole ditch day for everybody. And then I got caught. And <laughs> so, oh, I mean, I, you know, I was just like that. And, but it was like survival. How do I, where am I going to sleep tonight? How am I going to, you know, work? I actually had a job with junior career. So it was a legal job um, selling candy. And I outsold, there was only boys. And I outsold all the boys because right. I had to. And <laughs> Got that hustle muscle. That, that's, that's it. And then when I did go to foster care, I went to this girl's home in Laverne, David and Margaret girl's home. And when I went there, I, you know, there was a choice of, you know, do I climb out the window and AWOL every night and go party? Like, you know, this is what the kids did. And they didn't right. have cameras back then. Now right. it's more difficult but, but back then they were doing some crazy there was people in my closet i'd go to the closet there'd be some guy in the closet i mean because you share rooms you know right. it's interesting. Sure. and For and sure. then these these people purchased the old orphanage and they were the westons and the whipples so an artist and the weston hotels one of the daughters pamela um, was the wife. And so she was designing the hotels and he did the art that was in the White House. He did the dragon and never ending story. Really? They, yeah. And so they purchased this old orphanage and made His it. His name is Falcor, young lady. <laughs> See, Falcor. I know. <laughs> Very important in my life. There you go. And, and so, so Michael and Pamela Whipple and they bought this. And the minute they closed escrow and they moved in, I went and knocked on the door. And I said, I'd like to be your personal assistant. And they hired me. On the spot? On the freaking spot. Because Michael had been an orphan. And so he thought, well, you know, anybody that's going to knock on this door and say that, I'm going to hire. Listen, take what you want in life. Yes. So yes. Knock on the door. So that was a choice. So I would go home to the girls' home, to the group home with all the chaos. And then I would go back to this mansion and be treated like a queen and I, and i worked long hours because i was their assistant and they did make sure that i worked i mean like sure. 14 hour days on the weekends and then after school and so i did work but i was so happy because it was safe and it was like i'm like 
being a princess, but it was a choice. And I'd go back and I'd say, you know what, what kind of life do I want? Because I can choose. It's not about anybody else. I get to choose. 100%. And I think people don't realize that. I think they forget. You know, uh, when I was released from prison, you know, statistically, I had, you know, my chances of where, you know, get a good factory job, maybe have a family, and maybe be lucky enough to buy a house someday. And that's, you know, that's the best you're going to be able to hope for being 35. And, and you know, with or I was 36 when I got out with 35 felonies. Okay. And I refuse to accept that. You know, you you can't. I know my worth. Every single human being has worth. You had worth when you were born. And it's just like a dollar. I seen the, the dollar bill uh, that somebody had done one time, and it resonated with me to this day. If you take a dollar bill, it's worth a dollar. If you rip it up and throw it into a million pieces, it's worth a dollar. If you still stomp on it and rub it in the dirt, if you pick it back up and tape it up, it's still worth a dollar. So no matter what we've been through in our lives, you know, we're so much more valuable than a dollar. Yeah. And no matter how much we've been beaten or abused or whatever, we still maintain that value. You still have it. If you hold on to the tragedies of the past, it's always going to stop you from realizing your value. Yeah. And you're not going to be able to pursue. That's why I, I my biggest thing is self-awareness. Be so aware of who you are and be honest with yourself. No matter how much it might suck, yeah. stand in a room by yourself and have a conversation with yourself and figure out who you are. Write your own obituary and watch how that will change your life. How do you want to be remembered when you leave this earth? If you go down and write down how you want to be remembered, uh, from the five most important people in your life. That is what you want out of life. When, you've, when you're finished with that obituary, that right there, that's your goal. That's your passion, right? That's what you're passionate about. And you, it doesn't matter where you're at in life. 36 years old, I get out. I, I worked you know, almost a year breaking my back doing demolition in a labor union in Cleveland, Ohio. Wow. Uh, but I got up and I went to work every day. I was there early. I was the last one to leave every single day because I wanted to show that I have core value, that I'm here, and I know my worth. And I'm going to give you 110% of me. And anything that I do, I'm going to give 110%. And it wasn't long. I'm going to join a band because I want to. Yeah. <laughs> I love music. I'm passionate about it. I'm going to make a band. Mm -hmm. And I did it. I, I walked away from the career in the labor union because my goal in life is not to be a laborer for the rest of my life. So I left that. I walked away and said, I'm going to go start this music project and do this. And I just did it. And it worked. It was it was semi-successful. And then all having all of that come at me at once, you know, that level of of local celebrity in and 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 doing rock shows all the time and traveling to different states on tours, doing rock shows, it catches up to you because you know the sex and the drugs and all these things. And you're in my mind, you know, I've done over half of my life in prison, and in the first half of my life was really just being victimized in a bunch of crazy stuff. I don't know how to deal with these things. You know, I got a, a woman at home and, and I'm just not being a good guy. You know, I'm doing bad things, and, but I'm able to stop at, in, that, in the midst of it and say, you're going down the wrong path. And it's the funny part because my roommate, his name is Adam, uh -huh. said, you can't just change in one day, Sonny. Yeah. And I said, yes, you can. You can turn around and make the decision. Saturday night, my wife and I hated each other. We did not talk to each other. We were in a full-blown fight in the midst of a breakup, or fighting just to see the child. Sunday, we were back on. Good job. That's and it's been beautiful ever since because I made the decision to stop at that moment, turn around and pursue my goals and my passion in life. Yeah. And, and here we are, man. We're here right now. That's wonderful. Wow. So I'd love to hear more about your band. Which one? Which, so are you only, you're, you're in more than one band right now. Well, uh, well, my current, my, the, the band that I, I, I built that I created from the ground up, I wrote all the music, all the songs for was called Grim Trigger. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that was, it, it came out of nowhere. We started that in January of 2017. Um, and we hit the ground running. Uh, we did. We literally did our first show in in seven days. From the not having a band to meeting each other to writing a set and doing a, a thirty minute set in seven days. Um, and and after that, we we pumped fifty or sixty shows in 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 the following year. After mm -hmm. that, it grew just really good. Things went great. It was an amazing thing. 
Um, so that's the one that I, I, I refer to as my baby. Uh, but now I'm, I'm, I play bass in a band called the Wolf Hunters, which is an amazing, um, like new age rap rock, new metal type band, trap metal type stuff. Um, the guys that are involved, we have a female front woman uh, that does the singing, and her husband does the rapping. We have a guitar player who plays a guitar, uh, and the drummer and I play bass. And it's just amazing music, and it's great to be a part of such a wonderful team of people that they all have the same goal and the same passion in mind, and we're all just as hungry as each other, and it's such a great band. Uh, but I also have an online project uh, that I started with former Mushroomhead guitar player Tommy Church uh, mm -hmm. and my buddy Boob Jay. So we have all three of those little wonderful topics in the topic of music. Oh, I love that. That sounds fun. So now you're living your passion and your purpose and you have a wonderful family and you're having fun and you're earning an income doing that. It's crazy how all that, how, and, and the only thing I can say is I've, I've been talking about it since I hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. If you want something, you just take it. You just want, you just approach it. Uh, this is what I want. And this is what I'm going to do. When I was down and out and had no job, I walked into a staffing company that's owned by an incredible man named Mike Donato. I walked in there and said, I want to work talking to people. Mm -hmm. And he gave me the job, gave me the opportunity. I had the career of my life. And after all these things I'd been through, even after the Grim Trigger downfall and blowback and all that, I somehow landed in a career that was paying me $20 an hour on salary with paid vacations, paid time off, quarterly staff meetings, just benefits, bonuses, and it's work. I, I have an office. I have my own desk in a suit. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, I accomplished it. This is success to me in life. And then COVID hits. Yeah. Slap. And I lost it. Laid <laughs> off and you're not coming back. And in my mind, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Right. All the work that I've done, everything I've gone through, and now here it is. And at that moment in my life, I could have just chose to be a bitter person and said, COVID ruined my life. Uh, I, I'm just a failure. You know, life's just going to go downhill. Or I can do what I did and say, it happened. I have to accept it. Losses are lessons. I'm just going to learn whatever I did from it. I'm going to pick myself up. And what can I do next? What is my passion now? Helping people and performing. Yeah. Being in a band, COVID's killing that. Helping people, they took my job because of COVID. So how else can I do it? Mm -hmm. Get on the camera, perform on camera, yes. do reaction videos, start a YouTube channel. And when you build a platform and you start getting enough numbers, start motivating them. Mm -hmm. Start showing them everything that you sacrificed your whole life to learn. And yeah. you're going to help somebody. And it has grown into this massive, I have over 30,000 subscribers. I've got a worldwide global fan base and team of people that we are here to help people. And we've done so good at this point. We're helping people every day get over the stress of life and mm -hmm. learn how to deal with their problems and anxieties and stepping out of their shells. And I'm just so blessed to be able to serve like that. You know what I mean? Because being a leader is, at the end of the day, is about being a servant. Yes. You know, That's, that is so awesome. And imagine. So really, it was a gift that things closed down. Because yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're yeah. Really doing what you're supposed to do and you're still doing your music and sharing that and helping people. And I can just imagine it's going to grow even more. There's so many ways. I mean, just helping younger people that want to get into a band, too. Uh, yeah. That, that would love to hear, hey, you know what? You don't have to go down that road. You can just no ride on to this road, and there you go. You, yeah. you can skip all that other stuff. <laughs> and, and the beauty of networking like that, like what we're doing now between you and I networking, my people watching you, your people are watching me. It's somebody that's watching here tonight. Yeah. It's going to get something beneficial from this conversation. Exactly. And that's going to help their life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So the networking like that, my co-host, as far as it goes for young bands, younger bands that want to get in, my co-host of the Morning Brew is Gavin Curry. He has an amazing band called Dying Desolation. These kids, two of his bandmates, I think, are still in high school. They're young. Well, I think now they're, they graduated. But when they started their band, they were 17, 15, and 15 in high school. And they're really good, but they're smart, and they're doing things the smart way. So if you know, there's younger people that need it, 
we have that guidance too. We have in our Discord, we have the ADEX Nation that we have built. Uh, and we have the youth section in there that's ran by Gavin, who's uh, uh, he was a youth coach uh, in a pastoral something or another a while ago. But we have a bunch of youth people that are in there that right. are helping these depressed kids and, and yeah. kids that are going through rough times in their life from all over the world. And it's that was that was the goal. When when that's the promise I made to Mallory Bay when he started teaching me things in my life was that I, I'm going to help somebody in this world. I'm going to be an asset to the world, not a detriment to it. Been a detriment to it my whole life. That stops now. Yeah. And it's 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 that way with anything in life. You can make that decision right now. Say, you know what? I'm done. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be an asset to the world, not a hindrance. Yes, that's so beautiful. You know, and uh, one of the things I learned from Tony Robbins, I traveled with him for Love seven. Tony years. Robbins. Yeah. Did you really? Yes, and I, I, oh, I created so platinum nice. the whole thing and leadership and did all the coaching, and and so with that, his thing is he always says, in the moment a decision is made, your destiny is shaped. And so did, boom, the, de the decision, that's all you needed. Everything nice. else is so up in perfect time. I would love to have a conversation with Tony Robbins. Yes. <laughs> I'd love to have a conversation with him. But I've, I've watched a lot of his stuff, man. He's uh, an inspirational dude, man. Very well, inspirational I'll, I'll dude. I'll send you to his next challenge. He's got free challenges for everyone. So really, yes, I will. I will let you know about that and I'll share yeah. that. Um, One yeah. of the main problems with serving most of your life in prison is that you're, I'm legitimately a caveman. Mm -hmm. Like with all of this, I am literally have thrown myself into it. Like, you know, seven months ago, I could barely turn on a computer, <laughs> you know, and now, you know, I, I, out of necessity, I'm learning all these things. So like, I don't know how to do like an online, like, what do they call it? The uh, sermon things, or it's not a sermon, but it's like a online Conference. That too. I can't even get Zoom to work. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to go into Zoom, man. It took me long enough to learn Streamyard. I, I love Zoom. Streamyard. Streamyard's awesome. It's it's a great software, man. Very user friendly. It is. Yes. So I would love for you to share with um, the uh, audience now ways that they can connect to the programs you're offering online, the YouTube channel, all that. Sure. Uh, Primarily, if you just Google Sonny Von Cleveland, you're going to find it. <laughs> um, but you can go to YouTube and Sonny Von Cleveland on YouTube, Sonny Von Cleveland on Facebook, uh, and any of those are going to pop it up. We have the show, The Morning Brew, mm -hmm. uh, that's on both YouTube and Facebook. We have um, Rock One-on-One, -on -one where I interview international musicians from all over the world, uh, and we talk to them, and that's called Rock One-on-One. -on -one. Uh, and we have on the E360 TV network, um, Holding the Rope, which is a, a show that I wanted to spotlight normal everyday people that have overcome amazing circumstances and are doing something good for the world by holding the rope. I have this theory that's called Holding the Rope because I look at life as a mountain and we're all climbing it to get to success. And when you climb a mountain, you have to have a belay rope yes. to keep you safe. Uh, and if we all just connect that damn rope mm -hmm. and we hold it for each other, if when you're weak and I can grab that rope and hold it for you just for a minute, you can catch your breath. It means you can start climbing again. And if same with this guy and we, if we do that together and we just hold the rope for each other, we're all going to be able to get there so much easier. And in a world that's just filled with negativity and bull crap getting thrown at you every day, all you see on social media, all you see on TV, is just negativity, negative, negative, negative. We're trying to be a, a, a little bit of a light of positivity, man. Oh, I love that. Well, I will be tuning in to your show as well. well from thank you. I love that. Thank so, you. okay, we are coming to the end of our talking time. So don't forget to connect with Sunny Van Cleveland. And we will be back after these messages. All right, stay tuned. See ya. All right, if you are just tuning in, this is the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. Here we have real people sharing real stories and actionable steps to help you reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your business and personal life on your terms. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and I wanted to take a moment to reflect on one of my favorite authors and quotes. The quote is, 
create a definite plan for carrying out your desire and begin at once, whether you're ready or not to put this plan into action. And the author was Napoleon Hill. Now my memory or my first meeting with Napoleon Hill was actually back when I was eight years old and I did actually mention it in my new book bootstraps and bra straps the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation this was such a changing point in my life I was eight years old I was living house to house my family was not my mother and father were were having health issues they weren't really able to care for me full time so I was sent from one relative's house to the other. Sometimes I was with the healthy grandparents. Sometimes I was with a group of grandparents that wasn't so healthy and there was a lot of abuse going on. And at this point, I was eight years old. I remember I was actually um, in a nice neighborhood. Unfortunately, the home had a lot of abuse going on. My mother was home with me for a short time and I had taken up some little part-time jobs helping out in the neighborhood so I would literally this is back in the day when when this was I guess a normal thing I would go help out with with cutting the lawn or cleaning and, and um, actually polishing furniture when people actually did that and I would go do that for the neighbors and get money and so I went with my hard-earned money and I went over to another neighbor's house who was having a garage sale and I found this incredible book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill and at the time my little eight-year-old mind okay this is eight-year-old mind there was a lot of abuse and my mother wasn't financially able to or health-wise able to help me she had polio as a child and she had some other issues going on and emotional things and so it was hard for her and in my mind I thought okay this book is gonna do it because it is gonna tell me how to think and grow rich and I really need to do that because I wanted to get my own house or apartment for my mother and I so that we wouldn't have to be moving around and and she would be in a safe place and I would be in a safe place and so I took this book home and I slept with the book I read the book Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich from cover to cover this little eight-year-old girl I read that book over and over again um, for an entire year and I literally still have that original copy with me today I keep it on my nightstand by my bed and I still reread it from time to time and it has been such an incredible gift and I think that somehow it was something that the principles in there I took that to heart a lot of the principles in there and I I really lived by a lot of that and and the idea of creating a definite plan for carrying out your desire and beginning at once whether you're ready or not um, to put the plan into action is something I did often and I still do today and so that is just part of the secret sauce to getting back on your feet when you've hit a tough spot and you have to start over again sometimes you have to sit down and create a definite plan of what your goals are and your outcomes are even though you're not whether you're ready or not to put the plan into action see now this year we're coming out of 2020 and going into a new year 2021 <laughs> and all kinds of unknowns still with with the universal pause with covid um, our political arena in the United States global situations um, happening and so it's a time when we could not we could feel kind of not ready to put a plan into place like oh, should I should I make a plan for new year for the new year or for 
for this new season in life or this new time for my business or personally? Or should I just kind of wait until the world goes back to normal or things settle? And here it is straight from (laughs) Napoleon Hill himself. Again, I'm going to say it one more time. Create a definite plan for carrying out your desire and begin at once. Whether you are ready or not to put this plan into action. And that was by Mr. Napoleon Hill himself. And so I feel like that is something that is a great guide for whether or not it's a good time to start making plans for the new year. Whether that's in your business, your personal life both usually go hand in hand it's now's the time to start not tomorrow not when the world goes back to normal not when we know exactly what's going on or when they find a cure to covid or or whatever you want to call it the universal pause ends and it's now even with the unknowns and so that's that's something I'm really excited about. I just recently had a birthday and one of the things I've done for years and this probably <laughs> stems from my 8-year-old little self years and years ago, many years. Um that's something I do every birthday. I have a time during my birthday where I really sit down and I review my year. And I review what what worked for me, what I wished could have gone better, or what I need to change um, to make this new year for, for my birthday a better time. And and yes, we are close to New Year's as well. And whether you believe in resolutions or not, I, I don't know that it's so much a resolution to make a change because of a date. It's more for me anyway, the way I do it is I set up a new plan and it may be a continuation of a plan that I already have in action, but I reassess. I I have that time to reassess and make sure that I'm still on the right trajectory and that, you know, is the plan that I want that I'm carrying out so far, is it where I want to go? And am I on track? What do I need to change? Then I, I, I give myself a lot of credit for what's working. And that's something that we forget to do often. And I had to learn to do that instead of saying, okay, what didn't go, (laughs) what didn't go right? And yes, that's something to put down too, but also give yourself credit. This year has been interesting at best. And so it's not really so much at looking at all the things that didn't go right that were maybe out of our control to to the majority of the time. You know, lockdowns, okay, the business had to close or the book tour ended up going virtual, whatever it was for you. But looking at how the victories, the small victories you had personally um, listening in today, the victories you were able to have, the the heart space that you opened to your neighbors and your family and friends and reconnecting to your community, um, finding out who you really are. I think that's something you tend to learn about who you really are and do a lot of the self-work when tough times hit. And this year has has had us make some course corrections and some of us have (laughs) have really had an easier time than others but you get to see it could be a victory of oh my gosh you know I I got through maybe a time that there was a depression or you know gosh the whole business shut down and I had to figure out a new way to survive or maybe your rents weren't coming in if you're a landlord, or maybe you didn't have the money to meet the rent and you had to figure out a different way because your job or or business got shut down. So these are victories. Celebrate the victories and look at those, those that's the gold. And Napoleon Hill has this other 
three feet from gold. And it's not giving up when you're so close to success, to victory. And it may be, this is a great time to redesign your life on your terms and to reinvent your life on your terms to decide what success means to you now and it may be different this year may have you thinking about a different way a different lifestyle that you want there's a lot of people that are moving away from big cities some people are moving to big cities uh, I know that I've I've moved one of my main homes the, the main home away from a big city <laughs> and that was actually something I did intentionally before the universal pause before COVID was a thing before we even heard about it and really close to it it was in October of 2019 that I had made this choice and it was really to be in a place where there is a lot of um, event space and places where I could do tons of live events and <laughs> so much for that <laughs> because we haven't had any live events since and that's that's something I do really hope that we get back to at some point but until then I have been able to travel the world virtually and I have events online in Australia South Africa um, I've had events in London I've had events in all over the United States that have gone national and international online. So the way my thinking about events and how I do events has changed. And I'm, I'm very grateful that, that I did relocate to, to a space where that's available, yet there's also nature and different things that I, I personally wanted for myself and my family to be able to enjoy lakes and hikes and and swimming and, and all these great things. So this year, coming up on New Year's, maybe it's a birthday too, create a definite plan for carrying out your desire and beginning at once, whether you are ready or not to put this plan into action. A reminder from Napoleon Hill. And I can promise you one thing, you are going to get people Family, friends, loved ones, that when you declare, when you make a public declaration and you say, I am going to do X, Y, or Z, this is my goal, this is my plan. When you say something or you start working toward a plan or a goal, people are, you're going to get some pushback. That I can promise you. And, and that's going to be out of love, out of protection, out of sometimes it's out of jealousy or concern. It doesn't matter. You've got to go with your definite plan, your definite plan, and listen to your personal desire, not what somebody else wants for your life, not what maybe you wanted years ago as your success or happiness or whatever that goal or outcome is, whether that's for business or your personal life, this is your time. You can take your power back and your life back this year going into 2021. This is something, obviously, it's something that needs to happen right now <laughs> as soon as possible. It doesn't even have to wait until the 31st of December or the 1st of January to be put into place. It needs to be put into action as soon as possible. Now, I think this is a beautiful time and space for us to have that, those moments. Well, maybe a lot of us are on the holiday vacation time and you might have some time off from work. It's a great time to take advantage of that space and do that that planning plan your action steps make your decisions think about what you're going to do and so that that is really going to give you different results it doesn't matter what the world is doing as much as what you've decided to do and that's another Napoleon Hill concept and that's definiteness of purpose once you have the definiteness of purpose, the definite decision has been made, 
and you plot your course of action, yes, you may have to course correct. We don't know what surprise is next. <laughs> That's okay, because as long as you are moving forward, that is going to make all the difference. I also would like to invite those who are interested in an accountability and group program. We do have, I am offering a lifestyle design program. It is, yes, I want to reinvent my life on my terms. It is guided by me personally. It's an engaging online training that will help you reboot and reinvent an area of your business or personal life. And while we go through the Upgraded Life program, you'll notice that the tools, accountability, friendship with the other members will help you as you learn to apply the Boots formula to help you live your life, a more meaningful life on your terms and get even more happiness while you're par participating in your redesign process. I will be guiding you each step of the way to living life and doing business on your terms. So these are small group courses and this course is actually going to be 50% off. It is a one month course. We meet weekly and there's two different times that you can meet either during the day or an evening time. It's specific time, it's live. There's also, um, email response back and forth during the week to help you personalize your lifestyle design. So I'd love to work with you on that. It's a great affordable way to get into a group setting where you keep each other accountable. And I would love to work with you. So if you are interested in that, go to SheilaMack.com and there you will see lifestyle design. I want to reinvent my life on my terms and it is going to be marked at half off. So I'm looking forward to that and that there's also a free gift for you and anybody that's signing up for the course or not, if you go to the SheilaMack.com, you will see there is a small mini course. This is a recorded video course that's the introduction to the boots formula this is something to watch to get an idea for the boots formula and how to apply it to your life goals or your business goals for this year all right now don't forget creating a definite plan for carrying out your desire needs to begin at once so think of two ways you can get started now. And now we are going. If you are just tuning in, this is the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. Here we have real people sharing real stories and actionable steps to help you reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your business and personal life on your terms. I'm your host, Sheila Mack. A lot of people are not aware of this 211, and we, sh we talked a little bit about it earlier in the show, and I do share about it often. And that's an important resource. You know, one of the things that I felt really guided to write my book to help people find resources, to get them help, um, to give them lots of stories from other people and my own life experiences of ways and how to use the Boots formula to get back on track. And, and I believe it really works. It really does help people. And then there's the reality of a lot of times you could apply the formula, but you also need to take massive action, as Tony Robbins would say, and get all the resources together, especially if you're starting over, if you're in an addiction situation and you hit a rock bottom, if you're in an abusive home and right now you might be stuck with a stay at home and you're trying to get out and you don't know who to turn to for help. Well, that is where I felt so happy when I found the, out about the 211 and actually I found out about it from an actual guest that appeared on my show and now I'm, I'm the unofficial spokesperson that shares about 211 every chance I can. So some of the things that 211 offers, how does this work? 
if you have your, you know your phone wherever you're at and you dial 211 you're going to have somebody uh, answer that will get you to some resources the other way is to google 211 and your state or province so this is available in every st state in the united states and and the provinces of, in, in canada now i'm not sure what is available internationally i know this show goes internationally as well so if anybody knows other programs like this please call in or or message into dearsheila.com and i will definitely share that as well but for those in the united states and in canada 211 in your state or province and if you google that you're going to get a list and this list is going to be links so it's going to be cares housing assistance programs it's going to be housing and shelter food that's like food banks or or f ways to get help with food mental health help addiction and adult protective services infants and children's support help health care help with addictions licensed health facilities so that's important if you're dealing with maybe you have elder care and the facility where your your loved one is staying is now getting closed due to COVID or having an issue. Um, licensed health facilities, maybe somebody you know and love needs to now be placed. I, I have an entire chapter in my book on parenting and um, parenting our parents as well. And there's a time in our lives where we end up being the parents to our parents and taking care of our elders. Uh, I took care of all my elders uh, at a certain point and some of them depending on their health situation had to be in in a um, care facility for their safety or for you know um, healing purposes to to go through rehabilitation after surgeries and such and it's so helpful when you have the right contacts to get licensed health facilities and what will happen with that and I do share more about um, this in the book is uh, and, and ways to help with that but what happens is once you get that you'll get lists of places that you can go in your area the pricing based on your budget uh, there's different maybe your insurance covers something here it is my latest book I have to let you know something just between you and me this book is not one size fits all just like a pair of boots or a bra so the formula is designed to help you through any situation some homework grab a copy of my latest book bootstraps and bra straps the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation that's right if life has knocked you down get ready to pick yourself back up and give